but it sounded like right before the break he is finally cracked with the worst team in football. So uh, tell us what you're about to say there, Boomer, before I had to take a 15-minute break. Well, I mean, if you uh, take a look at uh, Le'Veon Bell's Twitter feed and you see the things that he's liking now on Twitter, saying that he he probably should be uh, traded away from the Jets, Tells you all you need to know. I mean, you know, that, what an what a awful signing that was. What a disjointed situation Adam Gase and Mike McCagnan created for Joe Douglas. And then when you take a look at Adam Gase's record, and I was looking at our CBS Research uh, uh, bullet points this morning, and I, I didn't even realize the Jets lost to the Cardinals, okay, 30-10. to 10. Jets head coach Adam Gase now has 30 wins. 30 double-digit losses and nine single-digit losses in his career. And you look at a team that is flat, that uh, we all knew were, was going to – we knew they were going to lose this week, and we knew that it was going to be ugly. And we knew that Kyler Murray was going to be running all over the place and probably have the game of the year for himself. And that's exactly what he did. And as I listened to the Jets after the game, and I know there's pride somewhere in that locker room with some players for sure, uh, they are a flat – misguided and just completely um, uh, overmatched team in so many ways. So here, here's if, – if I'm just going to throw this out there, and I'm going to let, let it simmer for a while, and we can let uh, Jerry do his update. But if I had to put my, like, uh, my glasses on to look into the future, my crystal ball, if you will – I would think that the Jets maybe trade Sam Darnold to the San Francisco 49ers as they get rid of the Jimmy Garoppolo disaster because they'll be able to do that after the year's over. End up with the number one overall pick and uh, draft Trevor Lawrence and better bring somebody in here that Trevor Lawrence is going to get along with and is going to be able to play football with and start over that way with Joe Douglas making the decision still as general manager, of course, because it's not all his issues right now. These issues still stem from the previous regime and the awkwardness of that regime being allowed to make the draft picks uh, when Adam Gase was first hired. But Adam Gase has got to go. He's just got to go. It's just, it's, and, and I hate saying that about coaches. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a big a proponent of uh, screaming and yelling about coaches being fired, but you know, Dan Quinn was finally let go mercifully yesterday and, and the GM at and, the same time. And, and Dimitrov let go. Yeah. I mean, just, you can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And I usually preach, preach patience with coaches, give them a chance to get their sea legs underneath them. But, but this, this is really th- bad. This is turning into the Ben McAdoo situation. Yeah. Which it, it just looks awful. I mean, it, and <sighs> I, I have to tell you, uh, sitting at CBS watching this yesterday and sitting there with people who are in the know of football, who actually have coached football, have played football, have scouted football, who have studied football, have been in the GM's office, been in the scouts' office, in the coach's office, and every aspect of football said it is just as ba- about as bad as a team can look at, 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 every, at, at every level. Now, they don't have their young quarterback. I understand that. And Joe Flacco is coming off of a neck injury and – I don't necessarily know that he played all that bad, but then again, he's not the energizer bunny like you you pointed out last week, and it's not exactly what this team needs right now.